Welcome to another episode of Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. We have a wonderful person as our guest today. He is born in Tinsukia, where he has also done his schooling. Graduated with economics honors from Cotton College, Guwahati, and masters in economics from Dibrugarh University. He is a batch of 1986 of the Assam Civil Services, having served in different positions within and outside the state of Assam. He was first posted at ESC Hojai, followed by as liaison officer, Assam House, Kolkata. And there are other very, very important positions that he has held. He had been the SDO, Kam Group, the Joint Commissioner, GMC, Deputy Secretary, GAD, Director of Sports, Deputy Commissioner, Golaga, Karim Ganj, Secretary Home, Commissioner, GMC, and there are so many other things. And lastly, he was the Secretary, Governor Secretary at Assam and the member of Assam Public Service Commission. After having a very successful career, as a bureaucrat, our guest today is Sanjeev Gohai Borua, who has retired from his services in February 2020. Hello. And it, it really gives me such a pleasure to pass on this information that, see, age and time does not matter if, if you want to really pursue your passion. And now, after being a successful bureaucrat, he is a passionate photographer, involved in photography activities, putting up one month shows, and contributing to the development of photography in Assam and the rest of India. It is our honor to have Sanjeev Guhai Borova in our studios of AFTA in an episode of Pixel Narratives with Anadush. Hello, Hello, sir. Hello. Uh, it's really a pleasure inviting you to my podcast, uh, Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. And I thank you that you have taken out some time from your busy schedule. Uh, this podcast is basically uh, to share the life uh, journey of people who have a lot of achievements in life. And while doing so, a uh, lot of students and uh, people who are passionately, they want to take up photography, to join photography, and to do some work with photography. So, my podcast is just to pass on some kind of motivation to the younger generation. Okay. Okay, actually, I was never a photographer. I was never a photographer. And yeah, I had a small camera. On this camera, with the camera, I used to do photography with my family, especially in the birthdays of my daughter. Again, while going to Silong, uh, I used to do photograph of that Umiyam Lake. Those kind of photographs I did. But uh, uh, these are not exactly photographies, any serious photography on my part. So I started it uh, after becoming uh, DC of Golakhan District. Actually, Golaghat district, you know that uh, Kajinaga is uh, under Golaghat district only. As a DC, I had to go to the park at least twice in a month to receive mm -hmm. a lot of VIPs, VIPs. They used to come to the, that particular uh, Kajinaga. So, my duty is to accompany them. So, there I saw some photographers, one photographer with big lenses doing photography of rhinos and all those animals, wildlife photography, I mean to say. Then I also thought of doing it, since I had to come at least twice in a month, so why should not I start photography, serious kind of photography? Of course, that was my, that was, no, I mean, it was not, seriousness was not there, I just wanted to start it there. Okay. So that way, that way I got one camera. I didn't have the idea about cameras also, I only knew that 
two cameras are very good. One is Nikon, one is Canon. And also I knew that more and more money I pay, you get a, you get a better camera. Uh -huh. So I didn't have the idea what is the price of a camera, good camera. Okay. So my budget was around say 25,000, something like that. <laughs> When I so that that was film camera. Film, no, that uh, was yeah. film camera. No, 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 DSLR. You started it, with DSLR. Uh, yeah, it was in no. I meant to say it was in 2012. Okay, you started uh, with DSLR. I was DM DC okay. of Kalkarin uh, uh, Golaga district in 2012. So you were in uh, close proximity to yeah, Kaziranga, and that's yeah, why yeah. we have come across wonderful yeah, photographs, photographs, photographs that so, you have taken of Kaziranga. Yeah, so and that only happens when you are very much into that uh, place yes. for a longer time. Yeah. It's not like a go and take photograph and right, come back. Right. So I think uh, the places where you have stayed, huh. that must have added to your photography. Huh. When you because starting, I started there only. Starting, yes. I started there only. Because most uh, of your photographs where you have people, you uh, have the wildlife. Oh, then what happened? Then I was transferred from Kadimga to Karimga. Okay. Kadimga to Karimga. So my uh, my gurus, you might even say, who I was learning photography from them. They said uh -huh. in Karimga you will not get what you are getting in Kadimga. Definitely. Because there is no wildlife thing. Uh -huh. So what I was suggested that you take a normal lens. 2470 lens and take photograph of human or anything, anything, anything comes okay. in front of you, you take the photograph. Uh -huh. So there, there, as a DC, again you have to go to uh, the field twice, uh, twice, okay. at least twice in a week. Okay. So what I used to do, I used to carry the camera along with me. Huh. I used to carry the camera along with me. Then uh, I used to do photography and come back. Then I started learning uh, a bit, you know, editing. Okay. Somebody taught me the Lightroom part, why, okay. how, how the okay. photoshopping okay. and Lightroom part. So I started doing editing also and then I started, in, it was in 2012, 13, the Facebook part also. Okay. So, <laughs> so what happens, every evening as a DC, DC is a very lonely person, right? very, because in the evening time nobody comes to you and you <laughs> cannot go to anybody's house. Okay. <laughs> so, so you are a very lonely person. So what I used to do after, after 8 o'clock, you have nothing to do there. So what I used to do, I used to take out the, those photographs and all. What I used to click in the daytime during my visit, field visit. Then in the Lightroom, I started doing uh, editing. I take 2 to 3 hours by it, up to 30, 10.30 and all. I do, used to do editing and then one photo after my edit, I used to put in the post in the Facebook. Mm -hmm. So that way I pass my time, oh, evening okay. time. And okay. by 11 o'clock I used to have my dinner and sleeps for the next day. Okay. Okay. So that way I continued for three years. I, mm -hmm. I was in Karimga almost three years. Okay. So I continued. I continued and if you do every day, definitely you will know something about editing, photography and all. Mm -hmm. That way I learned and uh, I came back. So came back then there was a, you know, people say there, they, in Bengali, the Lokta Echilo DC way, Phiregalo photographer way. So, uh, you know, uh, see it's, it's uh, very rare. Um, that you can see that a bureaucrat also have time for, you know, pursuing his passion. Actually, when did this passion actually come into you? No, see, I told you, now, every evening, three years, every evening, by almost twice in a week, I do, I used to do photography. Okay. Slowly, slowly, I started it as a hobby. Then it becomes my passion. Finally, it is an addiction to me. If okay. I don't do photography, at least in a, in every day, mm. it happens. It it it, it 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 kills me that you have missed something for the day. Some right. event you have missed. Okay. So now that way I developed it. It, it has, now it is an addiction to me. I am mm. addicted to photography. Okay. Addicted to photography. I do photography every day. I click every day. So, I, I think this is the first time I have come across someone telling that I am addicted to photography. I mean, you have passionately, many, I, I myself have been doing photography for the last 40 years, 
uh, but I don't say that that's my addiction. This is the first time I have come and that shows how much involvement a person can have with his, his camera. And uh, not that he wants to take photograph of something for uh, some purpose, but then that, that gives him some kinds of, you know, uh, satisfaction doing something. And that too, I am sure because of his, uh, the different positions that he has held and moving from one location to another, that must have added to the variety of photographs. Uh, in a recent exhibition that we have seen, there were a variety of your photographs, a variety of images. Which uh, genre of photography really attracts you? Actually, so far as I am concerned, I do photography. Okay. I do photography, anything, anything can be a photograph for me. Okay. Of course, in Assam, which that is in especially notice, everyone, everyone, all photographers, most of the young photographers, they start with uh, wildlife. Wildlife because of, we have a scope here. Uh, I also but started... That, uh, wildlife is a very costly... Yes, investment. even though it is a costly... <laughs> now it is, I tell my young photographers that I don't go for wildlife. That, that's it's a very costly affair and this is a reason why I was, I had to leave wildlife. I started with wildlife. Hmm. Finally, slowly, slowly I got to know that the equipment, especially the lenses, yes. which, which is required, actually required for good wildlife photography that is very costly very and it is not affordable so far as Exactly. Our, our kind of person is concerned. Right, right. right. And we are not professionals. Mm -hmm. We are not professionals. We do not sell photographs. Right. They even even Sudhir, the famous wildlife photographers, uh -huh. he came once. I was talking to him. Then he was giving lectures. He told the, all the you know students that why one thing you see, it is me, Sudhir. <laughs> I, I do not sell, I cannot sell rather, I cannot sell my photographs, right. it's very difficult. So don't think that you will be wildlife photographer and you can earn from here. Exactly, because the kind uh, of photographs that we uh, see uh, on National Geography and uh, Dis Discovery and as a, uh, like with our resources, it's very difficult to achieve, difficult. even if a little yeah, bit of yeah. those kind of photographs. Your, your lens should be Highly from different. 5 lakhs to 15 lakhs. Right. You're and then you must have a marketplace. Uh, then you will you can you, you must can have reach a marketplace. A, you can reach a, you can reach a place. Right. And that is not affordable mm -hmm. as we, we, we don't because since we are not professionals, yeah. we do it for our passion, our addiction. So uh, why should I go for wildlife? And while another problem is there wildlife, for wildlife photography you will have to go to a place where wildlife is yes. available. And you have to stay there. Stay it's there. not yeah. that you go and there just and it is not uh, yeah. orchestrated yeah, 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 what happens in Kajiranga. We go hmm. to Kajiranga, we hire a uh, gypsy, uh -huh. this gypsy will take you around in two hours or three hours at the yes. place. and within three hours you are not, you will not be allowed to go down from the, get down from the gypsy also, yes. whatever will come, it is luck and chance you will get exactly. some luck will go. Exactly. So that way you cannot do the wildlife. Right. 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 You will right. have to camp there, you will have to follow the wild particular animal mm -hmm. or at least for some You must animal. have access to the core area. Yes, yes, yes. Otherwise, uh, you will have to give time. Yes. So, we cannot afford time also. Yeah, because this every kind of day going, uh, yeah. staying there. And, yeah, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. Because I remember uh, having visited Kaziranga uh, about 20 years back and uh, just like that tour, tour uh, you know, day tour with a uh, gypsy. I could see a crew of National Geography standing there. And with a lot of security. Right. I asked one of the photographers, what is the... They said that they are here for the last seven days. Yes. yes. They were waiting in that particular spot. And nowadays, wildlife is also dramatized. You know, you, they, you arrange a kind of a scene and then you try to get that maximum yeah. out of it. Whether it is Rankhambor or any yeah, other. Yeah, that's, that's what's going on. So now wildlife is also dramatized and they were waiting there because they were focused at one of the pond inside Kaziranga that at a particular point of time you have a rhino coming there, elephant coming there, deers coming there, buffalo coming there, they are waiting for the tiger. 
And now the for seven days they have been waiting for the tiger. All the animals have come, but the tiger hasn't come. It is same. It is same. <laughs> it is same. Wildlife photography. It is very difficult to yes. do wildlife photography in Assam. Huh. In comparison because to the other places uh, of uh, India, uh, the uh, Rangkambur. Uh, if you go, tiger has at least seventy percent chances that you will you will you will get right, a tiger. Right, right. But in Assam, in Kajiranga, you if you go in my case. I visited Kajiranga more than at least 50 times, more than okay. 50 times during, okay. during my, my tenure uh -huh. here. And hardly once or twice I met that tiger. Yeah, because I still remember one of your photograph of a rhino who was, uh, you know, uh, running uh -huh. in a, with a force and uh, that strikes me even today. Uh, you know, uh, that motion, the movement of the rhino with the stones and pebbles going out. Uh -huh. A wonderful photograph. You and can't get that kind of photograph. All these are luck. All these <laughs> exactly. All these are luck. All these are luck. Because I also got very one very good photography of Rhino. So I was uh, entering in Kalirana. That was a almost evening time. Evening mm -hmm. time. So I will get hardly get uh, half an hour to one hour time. So one Rhino was standing on the road. Okay. Just 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 before entering. Well, just after entering Kalirana, and it was not moving. It was mm -hmm. not moving. So what to do? Mm -hmm. He was not going. Then two forest guards also came from this side. They also have to go to the inside of the forest. Okay. So they were also in hurry. They started throwing uh, stones, building. And stone that there. stone has come in your photograph. Uh, yeah, yeah. So I, I, have, have, it, I <laughs> have marked it. Yeah, I clicked it. And that is I think you remember. Uh, yeah, you see the stone. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a very really famous photo. That has exactly. Been. But it is not. Credit doesn't go to me. It no, is a luck and chance. You have, you have captured that uh, moment. moment. This is a luck. And luck. no, the, apart from luck, sometimes what happens is like if you are taking a camera, you have to depend on the camera. And that time, whether you have the real uh, actual shutter speed or you have the correct uh, aperture or the correct lighting or the ISO is correct. So, a lot of things, a lot of things come. Anyway, so how did you learn all this thing? <laughs> See, I three. I'm. This is my fourth camera. Okay. This is three cameras. Three cameras. I click so much. Uh -huh. All these cameras now are totally out of order. Okay. As per my statistic, I this uh, statistics. I click more than thirty to forty lakhs of. Picks in okay. I did. Uh -huh. So if my as my wife says, Are if you if the light of the camera is exhausting more than the camera <laughs> and all those things, anybody can be a photographer. <laughs> no, it's not like that. <laughs> it's not like that. Uh, see. So it is my my I mean I mean to say, so much of clicks I have done, mm. so much of mm. things and, and every click I'm learning. Still I'm learning. Right. Today morning also I have learned static while clicking. So I know I got some ideas about uh, especially the light, which is light. very important. Yes. Which yes. is very important yes. part of photography, huh. web photography. So that I have come to know, and also focus point and compositions, everything. I have started learning from doing this thirty to forty lakhs of clicks. Okay. So now I know which photograph will be good, huh. which photograph will not be good, and uh, on later part of now part I have started learning, uh, reading some uh, theories also. Now I know, I have come to know theories, I, have, I'm, I was doing it actually, I was doing it and theoretically also slowly, slowly I'm learning, still I'm learning. Right, actually, actually I'm learning. Uh, like even when we are, I was doing my uh, bachelor's in fine arts, uh -huh. so we had a subject called photography okay. and those days it was a film camera and the teachers used to tell us, this is your assignment for shutter speed go and take moving objects and at different shutter speed note down at which shutter speed you have got water mm -hmm. so we have done that then with the aperture mm -hmm. then then changing the eye also mm -hmm. so we had lot of exercise kept on going going and, but now after the you know the digital cameras have started coming you have an option of taking photographs that are random now uh, you know the uh, investment is only with the camera results is you know you don't have to wait and do not to be you know very calculative that i'll take only five exposures or six or so you can take random as we yeah, are here now sanjita what i wanted to uh, uh, ask you is in school our children they also 
like I, I had started in my school a photography club for three years, we were going on. Uh, it's still there. So, what would be your advice to students who want to push, pursue uh, photography? I, I see, see in China it is said, everybody will have to play, yeah. everybody will have to sing. Okay. And from, from everybody, some specialized you know, students can be taken out. My, my, my suggestions or my say in this regard, everybody should go for photography. Yes. Everyone. Mm -hmm. Everyone. Because it's a kind of passion, it's a, it gives you a, a the, especially the students, it gives you a, some concentration, some focus. Exactly. Focus. Uh, so that mind is not diversified, mind is concentrated. So my, my suggestion will be that when I, it's all schools. All must students have. must have photography right. for every student. Ah, yes. Ah, after yes. after some years, after some classes and all, they can be diverted. Some people can be can be kept. Those who are really good, they mm -hmm. should be given a special VA. And nowadays it is very easy. Even though I have learned from clicking only, but nowadays it is easy in the sense in YouTube you will get some good clues. Yeah. Where you don't have to spend or uh, one year or two years like me, mm -hmm. that can be learned within a month. That okay. can be learned and some instructions should be there, some, mm -hmm. some teachings should be there. So they can learn photography initially. So I think every school should start. Right. So right. Every school should start and for everybody. Right. And uh, uh, you know, the, I had two wonderful guests in my uh, episodes of Pixel Narratives. And they have been photographing butterflies and that too they have been doing for the passionately for 15-20 years. Yeah. And they have gone across all over the country trying to photograph. They have recently visited Assam mm -hmm. and in my first and second episode of Pixel Narratives, you know, wonderful photographs and they are passionately taking photographs of butterflies. Yes, uh, especially butterfly, a butterfly color. Yeah. Butterfly's color is a, you know, it is a subject where all photographers are attracted. Yes. All photographers, so serious photographers, they also do at least some, some, some numbers of, you know, clicks for butterfly. Okay. Some invest, uh, give some time for butterflies, like I also did. I also did now, of course I don't do, because the butterflies are very, you know, and uh, it's good to click and in a sum. Of course, in Assam also, in the northeast, we have some 30 wonderful species, yes. 30, 300 or 400 numbers of species of butterflies yes, available yes, yes. here. And this is the particular month. Yes. This is a month. This is a month, and especially from April to uh, August, so July, August, September, these butterflies are available. And, uh, and it is available in your uh, compass only, and then yes. the compound only. Mm -hmm. It is available, but wherever mm -hmm. there is a flower, butterflies come. So, uh, this is a very good subject for photography. Okay. okay. So, you know, you are uh, doing photography for the last about 12, 13 uh, years. 13 years. Till now, do you have any regret? No, that I could not take this photograph. Oh, I, I had my camera, but I could not take. I didn't have my camera, and I could not take. Ha! Huh, sometimes to this degree, then sometimes you see photography. What I feel, and some theories also there. Uh, whenever I see certain things, mm -hmm. it gives a resonance and some kind of spirit to you, uh, so that you feel that this 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 needs to be photographed. Right. Immediately, this right. needs to be photographed. And uh, if you don't have a camera at that time, it really it's very painful. <laughs> it's very painful. You, know, you miss it. Uh, exactly, exactly. So painful. what I do, I carry the camera all the time. Today also I thought of carrying the camera. Uh, you have been really <laughs> wonderful. You <laughs> so know. I carry the camera all the time so that I don't want to miss, miss any of exactly. these subjects. You know. All right. And subjects can be you know in front of you at any point of time. Any point of time. Anything can be a subject. You, you would think that oh, oh I could have taken this photograph and I just uh, missed it. Uh, so yes, and uh, what are your plans? Any particular thing that you want to go and do some photography? I see this because of see under morning time I go for walking and Jan Bajar Brahmaputra. Okay, near Brahmaputra. So so last actually almost six to seven years 
I do photography of Brahma Pratri, of Brahma Prats, only in the Ujjanmajar part. Okay. Ujjanmajar part. And so that will give you uh, a lot uh, of difference uh, from the yeah, second. Strangely, because mm. strangely, the Brahmaputra changes in every moment. Right. Hundreds of photographs, I'm, I'm doing hundreds of photographs every day. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of photographs every day. Every day I'm getting new, new, some kind of, you know, aspects, new kind of, you know, composition, new kind of you know, something, um, uh, stories in Mahaputra. Mm -hmm. So, my, uh, if you ask me, if you, I want to concentrate in one subject or more, I do, I do photography of everything. Uh -huh. uh, then my future is, uh, I like to do Mahaputra more, better way, more broadly. Exactly. And, uh, uh, you know, it, they say the, the camera is not a record, just a recording device. It talks about a time. If you are really, like when you think that I want to take photograph of Brahmaputra from, and you have been continuing for the last 10, 15 years, it talks about a yeah. period. period. And it's, it's really uh, recording the history. History. It's, it's not fact, just... In fact, hmm. I... You, you, you have seen my Facebook yes. accounts. Almost every day I post one photograph. Right. Almost right. every day. So sometime, once uh, five, six years before, uh, that when Bhagavad Gita was there at the time, so I often quite visit to my Bhagavad Gita and talk to him. I feel good. Mm -hmm. Then I told him that, sir, I don't know, I'm doing it uh, Facebook. Sometimes I get bored also. Then he said one thing. Then, See, Facebook, you are... Uh, capturing a time, the way you say, yes. capturing a time, and also the uh, history of the time. Exactly. The point of time, history mm. of time. And you, Facebook is a big digital library. Exactly. It's a digital library. Whether you will be there or not, it is a not matter. But this library will continue till Facebook continues Facebook. Right. And if somebody analyzes the time, of that, that particular period, yeah. if they see, if somebody wants to see, uh, see your Facebook account, he will get a, he or she right. will get a right. glimpse of that period of time. Exactly. So you keep on posting. Right. That's what exactly. I, uh, keep on know, posting. You know, and I, I really get a boost. Mm -hmm. you know, yes. 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 Uh, when I was uh, uh, doing this photography, my first uh, one-man show in Guwahati in '89, he didn't want to tell. Hiruda, he came to my show and he said, come with me tomorrow, you will, we will go to Kormonasha, the small island in front of the DC yeah, port that time. Uh. You start photographing crows. So he put that bug on me and for about a year I was taking photographs only of crows. Okay. And he had accompanied me to the uh, island and he said, see, each and everyone is having a different character and then they are talking. Yes. They, they are having some narratives going on in between them. So he, you know, there are, because he is a fraud, a poet. So his way of thinking and then every day he used to tell me, show me your photographs. You see, this is talking. This, this, is the, this is the relation of this and this is the relation of this. So those are really, uh, you know, no, yes. he, he, he really nicely said he is a poet uh, yeah. and Hiruda is a great poet hmm? and definitely he feels, in fact, I also feel, uh, it is also said that their poetry and painting has a very good relationship right. with anything. In fact, I have also found photography is also a, like a painting or poetry. It, it is, it is. is. Poetry it is. Because of, see. Uh, Only the medium uh, is different. Yeah, medium is different. So, uh, I used to read poetry mm. in my mm. So since my school is to see now, every uh, photograph, uh, even uh, even uh, this photograph, so it speaks a yeah. lot of things. Lot of things. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it is a narrative, yeah. unless this photograph uh, uh, tells a story, yeah. it cannot connect with the viewer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now yeah. see, the entire uh, landscape is yellow, yeah. and it is having a variation of yellow. You have little bit of greens also, and from where has this emerged? And that is the point of vision. Yeah. And you can see, it's it's so well defined, you can see a movement, you can, you can think a lot of things, you know, associated with you. And you see the horizon that has been kept here with a patch of green. So, if it, it has all the quality of a painting. But then we have had a long battle and uh, finally we have won. 
after about uh, 200 uh, years or so, that Lalit Kala has recognized painting, uh, photography mm. also as an art form. Is but earlier, visual? photographers uh, were not treated. Not treated. Yes. But now, uh, photography is an art form. art form. And uh, all over the world, there are people who have been doing photography in the way painters have been doing painting. So, that was really wonderful talking to you. And uh, I am sure our viewers must have enjoyed this episode talking to Sanjeev Gohai Burua, one of our eminent photographers, passionately involved with photography, even after being in the bureaucracy, in the heads of different uh, posts that he has chaired uh, as a civil service, uh, and he has taken up his passion. So, if you want to really pursue your passion, this is, there's no time for it. Any time you can take up your passion. Thank you, Sajita, for being one of my guests today for Pixel Narratives with Anutosh. In our next episode, we'll be again talking to someone who will be sharing his life journey with all of us. Till then, goodbye. Thank you.